Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and this is the new 2024 DU8000. I went ahead and pre-ordered it for the channel so you don't have to spend your money until we see what it's all about. So in this video, we're gonna get it all set up and I'm gonna give you my first impressions. Then later on, I'm gonna do a comparison, show you this TV against the last year model, which was the CU8000, to see if they really made any improvements versus the specs that we might read online. So with that being said, sit back and relax. Let's get started. <music> So the DU8000, who is this TV for? Well, if you're a Samsung fan and you're looking to save some money and not go all the way over to the higher end 900D or anything like that, this TV might be perfect for you for the fact that it does have some great features to offer. And if you're a Samsung fan, it's a pretty good price as well. So in the box, it comes with two feet, every TV does. And there's some screw holes on the back to mount it, I'm pretty sure. And it's fully adjustable, so if you leave it like this, the TV's gonna be flatter on your table, but if you flip that up, it'll raise it up just a little bit higher. And of course, it comes with a book to help you get it all set up. You're gonna get a power cord and a remote control. And like before, it comes with a clip so you can stick your wires in there and run them down one of the legs. Very easy stuff. Now the remote control, look at this, tiny. Of course, you have your power button. And if you press this little button right here, you can get to the settings. There's a microphone, plus this TV has voice command. I know this TV will support the Samsung Bixby voice command, and I think Alexa built right into it. Plus, I think it has Apple AirPlay, but we'll get into the settings a little bit later. And to finish it off, we have a back button, your home, and here's the thing. The volume goes up and down. If you press it, that's how you mute the audio, just in case you didn't know. And I will tell you, there's no batteries inside of here that you have access to. You have to put it in the solar mode that usually lasts a few months or you can use that USB-C on the bottom, just charge it up on your computer, just like a cell phone, pretty cool. All right, let's get this out of the box. So before I put the feed on, I want to show you the bottom of the television. First of all, we have a Samsung logo right here, and there's a press button so you can turn the TV off and do some basic functionality like switch the inputs. There's a 10 watt speaker right here on one side of it, and then on this side is the other 10 watt speaker. Now, one thing I want to point out about this TV is that it doesn't use screws, so we slide in the mounts right here, and again, you can adjust those feet to your liking. Before I get to my first impression, I just want to show you how easy it is to set up a Samsung TV using the SmartThings application. Here you can set it up with a smartphone or a remote control, but you're gonna to have to punch in your email and all that stuff with this little tiny guy, and that could be cumbersome. So I'm gonna use an iPad to set all this up, and keep in mind, you can use an Android phone or a iPhone. So first thing we will do is click on smartphone and we're gonna get a barcode. And then we just take the iPad and we're gonna go ahead and open up the SmartThings application. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and open it. And this opens up the SmartThings software. And as you see here, it's starting to add a device and getting everything ready to go. But keep in mind, you need to set up the SmartThings application right away. Now, if you look on the TV here, you can see that it is connecting to my iPad. And if you give it a few minutes, it's gonna walk us through the application so we can get the TV up and running without having to use the remote control whatsoever. And after you walk through all the different settings where it asks for the name where you're gonna put it, it then becomes part of your SmartThings hub. So you can control the TV anytime you like by using your tablet or your cell phone. Now earlier I did show you this remote control, but I still like to use this old one that I got from Amazon, and mainly because it has the settings right there at the bottom so I can do these videos a lot better for you. But they're about 10 bucks if you wanna pick up one. From the factory, most TVs are set up like this from Samsung is eco mode. Now if you wanna save energy in your home, you definitely wanna to need to leave it in that particular profile, but you can go down here and you can put it on the profile that you like. So, while I'm in here, I just want to take a quick look at the different profiles to see how it changes the picture quality. And a lot of people seem to like movie mode, but look how much darker the image gets whenever you do that. There's also a filmmaker's mode in here. It puts the TV in a picture profile, so on certain content, you're gonna be able to see the image just like the director intended. But the downside of this is that some TVs like this one don't have a lot of niche ratings, so some of the scenes might appear a little bit darker. So you might wanna just go for the movie mode if you like that warmer look. Now turn off the lights. I can see the back lights up in here. And I will tell you that this is a VA panel, so you wanna make sure you're sitting in front of it to get the best picture quality. But you can make it a little bit darker by going into the settings. And you can go into the contrast enhancer. And there's another setting that you can play around with, and it's called shadow detail. 
Inside of here, you can adjust this as well. So you can pull up a lot more of the details in the background. Now this TV does have a gaming mode. I'll just pull up the PlayStation so I can show you some of the demos so we can take a look at this together. And mind you that this TV doesn't have the gaming bar, it just has the gaming mode. And you would press play pause to pull that up on the TVs that does support it. And we're talking like the Q60D and higher. So in this gradient pattern, I can see some imperfections right here where it's not a smooth transition from one color to the other. And where you would normally see that if you have something that you're watching like a movie and it goes from black to white, you definitely can see that the transition will not be as smooth as something like the Samsung QN90D. This is a 720p picture and it's actually doing a decent job at it, but let's switch it over to 4K to see how much cleaner this image can get. So far as upscaling, I think it does a good job as well, but this TV natively likes 4K content if you wanna get the best picture quality out of the television. Another thing I noticed is just the colors pop more and I can see a lot more clarity around the edges. So again, 4K is gonna give you the best resolution possible. Next, I wanna see what this TV looks like on blooming. So I'm gonna cut off the light so we can take a closer look in the darkness. And basically blooming is when you see halo effects around images and you normally can see them at the end of a movie when it rolls the credits. Now I'm not seeing too much blooming on this television, but what I can see is the backlights. Now trying out the contrast enhancer, I really didn't get much of a difference in the picture as you saw right there, but there's a few more things to test. So here's a motion test I want to show you. And the top line is kind of smooth, but the bottom line gets a lot more jaggedy. But let's try out some different picture profiles. The eco mode smooths it out quite a bit. And keep in mind, movie mode is for 24 frames per second movies. Uh, standard smooths it out quite a bit. Let's go down to filmmakers mode. And again, it's ready for that 24 frames per second. And that's why you see that judder right there. So if you want the smoothest picture, you want to put it on standard or eco mode. And if you want to watch movies, make sure you put it in movie mode so it matches for that 24 frames per second content. It makes the TV look a lot better as far as the tracking of the images. Next, we're gonna try out the Xbox, but again, you have a source button right there. It's another reason I like this remote control. So on the bottom here, we can just go over to the Xbox, click on it, and it'll load it up. Now this is a 60 hertz panel, but I just want to see if it will support 4K at 120 hertz at any signal. So real quick, this TV will support 4K, and if you toggle it down, it'll support 1080p and 720p for gaming. If you go to the TV details, there's not a lot checked off here. So as you can see, it's been a 60 hertz panel. It doesn't support 120 hertz. And this TV doesn't have Dolby Vision, mainly because Samsung supports their own format called HDR10+, which is kind of like Dolby Vision. But keep in mind, most TV panels are not 12-bit, so you're not going to be able to get the full benefits of Dolby Vision anyway, unless you get a reference series type monitor. And I tried 1440p. I also tried... Um, 1080p and again 60 hertz is all you're going to get you cannot override the television so this is not the full review i just want to kind of take out a box and show you some of the different features in the television but i will be working on that full review and it will be coming out in the near future so make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell if you want to be one of the first ones to check it out at this point i can't honestly say that it's better or have a lot of improvements over the cu 8000 because Overall, it looks kind of same, but they did change the remote. If you want to get access to the hubs, you now need to sign into the Samsung account. And I'm not too excited about that because the previous models, you got the full hub as soon as you turn it on, but that is something they want to do. And as you can see here, you still get access to all your inputs, which is a plus. So stick around for that full review, which I'll be bringing out soon. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thanks all for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.